Oh, well, there it went. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! All right guys, welcome back to another S10 build. Today, I'm going to pull the rear axle out and try to get this 14 bolt in. Now, I've been waiting on parts for this 14 bolt. The axle was just like I expected, you know? I got it for 500 bucks, the guy had it for 12, he dropped it to eight, he dropped it to six, and that's when I went up and I was like, okay, I gotta get this thing, and I got it for $500 with an ARB, with 513 gears, with the disc brake brackets and the disc brakes, uh, and that crane diff cover that's on it. So I couldn't be upset that preload on the on the pinion bearings weren't right. The pinion was set too deep. The backlash wasn't right. And the ARB collar was actually broke. So the problem with that then is I tried to repair it. I messed up. I drilled it too deep. I couldn't solder it at that point. So I had to JB weld it. And the JB weld did not hold the 100 PSI. I tested it. So I have been waiting um, for a few weeks for that part. And unfortunately, it's just on back order. And I've been trying to do wait to put this axle in for that reason. Because it's so much easier to do stuff out here than it is under here when you don't have a lift. I also got this thing all siliconed. And I'm working on my shifter stuff. Let me show you my shifters real quick. So if you guys watch Trail Mater, my buddy Rory Irish, he likes to use snap-on wrenches. Well, we're on a budget here, so I am using, that's right, Pittsburgh Harbor Freight Wrench, uh, wrench, Harbor Freight Wrench. And uh, that's going to be my other shifter. So it'll sit right inside with that rubber boot, and that is how I'm going to shift both my transfer cases. So first order of business is getting this rear axle out because we don't need it. You can see here right where this thing is leaking and that's because the axle tube is actually leaking around the axle tube because all these things have is just a couple little spot welds where the axle tubes are pressed in. That is why I went ahead and welded this together because that is a weak link of the 14 bolts. And I showed you guys how to do that on the Dana 60, but I did the same thing to the 14 bolt. So the easiest way to keep from making a mess here when you take your brake lines off is if you have rubber ones and you're getting ready to replace them anyway, is just pinch the rubber line off. I can take this off and all that's going to leak out is what's in here and not the entire system. Dang. May have to free that up a little bit. More fire. Well, there it went. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Got it. <laughs> that was gnarly. Woo wee. That got hot quick. Too much fire. Woo. So I don't know if you guys noticed this, but when I loosened these up, the suspension actually drooped out more, which that's telling me that somebody over tightened these to the point when they actually, now that it's loose, it's freeing up and giving it more suspension flex. And by somebody, I'm sure that was a factory because I don't think this thing's ever been touched. I just dropped another inch down. Normally if this vehicle was sprung over, I would unbolt the axle, pull the axle out before dropping leaf springs, but because it's sprung under, it's gonna be easier for me to go ahead and just drop this thing out and then roll this axle over and then pull the U-bolts off, I think. We'll find out. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I went ahead and got some new Harbor Freight jacks. I have the off-road jack, which I use outside all the time and up in the front or anything that's tall. This thing is almost just as tall. This is their low profile three ton. This is my old jack. This jack still works just fine. But let me show you guys something. Can you see the difference here of how much lower that one sits than this? So when I'm having to do stuff like work on my daughter's car, that, that jack comes in really handy. 
Plus, look at the difference of the height that this jack reaches versus this jack. So this jack not only goes in lower, but actually raises up higher, has a better reach, so I don't have to get in as far to jack it up. And it just, it's, it works better. I didn't really think that I needed a new jack because this jack still works until I got a new jack. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. This isn't a, this isn't a sponsored deal or nothing. I'm not getting paid to promote this but I just wanted to show you guys the jack differences. Anyway, uh, enough with the jack stuff. I'm gonna put the jack under this axle just to help it out a little bit when I pull these bolts out. <laughs> I forgot about the breather vent. Breathe vent. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just cut that. I'm gonna want a longer one anyway. Uh, there we go. Right. Hey yo. We got everything out, got it cleaned up. Now I want to go ahead and remove the exhaust because this thing has all kinds of rust holes in it everywhere. So let's go ahead and take it out. <laughs> Think that one was bad? <laughs> This exhaust must have been blessed because it's holy. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> and bent. Look at that muffler. I bet I can get enough money out of that catalytic converter to pay for my whole exhaust because I've already found replacement high flow ones for $60. So maybe I'll just go sell a catalytic converter and get a whole new exhaust. <laughs> Now, normally I'd go ahead and just toss these right back in, but we're gonna put these on, and these are full-length ad leafs that I got from BDS. BDS is also another company that works with Onyx Off-Road, so if you have an Elite membership, then you get 20% off on all BDS products. So I got these leaf springs for just 70 bucks, uh, $70.86. Why I like these ad leafs is right there. Obviously, it's got a little more arch than these do, but that's going to help give it a little rise. Plus, when it's flattened out, it's going to go basically from eye to eye and really support this leaf spring. Which is what we need since we're going to stay with the leaf springs we got. Before we go ahead and put these in, there is one thing I want to show you guys. This is a stock center pin for an S10. This is a 3 8 center pin. Um... Pretty standard with most leaf springs. That is not going to be big enough. That is going to be our weak link of our leaf springs. So I got these from JKS. They were seven bucks and you can get these at a 20% discount as well. These are seven sixteenths center pins. I can't just throw a seven sixteenths center pin in this hole. I can't just drill it out with any drill either. I'm going to have to use a mill. So, I got to take these over to my buddy Pat um, because he's also got a mill and uh, maybe he'll sell me a mill afterwards too. No. <laughs> Bike path. So I had 
somebody asked if everything we own has a cracked windshield. Well, the Cherokee Rat's Nest doesn't have a cracked windshield because I put a new one in it. Um, hopefully that stays strong for a while, but I'm pretty sure everything else has a crack. Fifty bucks for helicopter rides. Should we do it? But if we should do a helicopter ride, let me know down below, and uh, maybe I'll film that. Come down here and film that one day. I think the reason that our windshields get cracked up here in South Dakota so quick is mostly due to our weather. We'll get 70 degree temperature swings in the same day, in the same 12 hours. All right, we got the leaf springs over here, clamped them up. The first bolt broke off, haven't pulled the second bolt yet, but uh, this is the one thing that I can't do myself because I don't have a mill. So Pat's gonna drill these out for me because he's a nice guy. So this is what I don't have right here. This is the variable speed. You can turn it way down, right? Yeah. Here's, here's the biggest thing with drilling leaf springs is the speed. This, this machine will go, you can stop it with the rheostat and crank it up to, to really scoot. So RPMs are critical or else you just burn up the bits on spring steel. I'll clamp it with my hand. <laughs> like butter. Now that doesn't happen normally with leaf springs. If you're trying to do that on a regular drill press, you just can't get enough, you can't get it slow enough, you'll just sit there and burn your bit up every time. I've tried. We gotta drill these out too. Yeah. Huh, Charlie Dog. Here's what came out, here's what's going in. You can see this is quite a bit thicker. It's gonna be quite a bit stronger. 29.37% stronger, I'm guessing. What do you think, Pat? I guess, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Once you cut the center pen off, one of the things I like to do is go ahead and just peen this metal, basically mushroom the threads down over the nut. And that way it can't back off. Okay, so that took like, I don't know, what, 10 minutes? Not long. <laughs> and we just did both the leaf springs, got them knocked out, got them drilled out. Uh, one of the things, Pat even just used like a Chinese drill bit. So it doesn't even take a fancy drill bit, it just has to be slow speed. So uh, I don't know what you guys are going to charge me for this um, to have Pat drill these out, but uh, whatever it is, it's got to be reasonable because I could run this, I just don't want to mess up his machine. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks, Pat. You're welcome. All right. Cool. Well, I'll uh, I'll plan on picking you up here in a couple days then. All right. All right. Bye. Hey guys, guess what? Matt's actually gonna come out and help me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come out and help you. I don't suggest burning out your bushings, but that was the fastest way I think I could have got them out. And uh, if you guys know a faster way, please let me know because it ain't gonna press out, that's for sure. Like new. So 
So I wanted to get new bushings for everything. I got it off of eBay from Energy Suspension for $62.49. Now we can go ahead and bolt these bad boys up. Another reason why I needed to change the center pin out anyway is because I needed to go up. When it's a spring under, <clears throat> the pin actually goes down because the axle sits on top of it. When it's a spring over, you want the pin to go up so that it sits down in the leaf spring bracket. Perfect. So here's the factory S10 shackle. It's super chintzy, way too thin. I got these off of eBay as well for $33.90. Now you can see the difference in thickness there. Quite a bit thicker, a lot more meat here, and just a little bit longer because, you know, we want more flexi. Flexi, yeah. I did go ahead and put red grease on these bolts too. That way the bolt hopefully will never seize up on the sleeve and will just be in that much better shape. There we go. Guess it's time to clean that axle up. All right, now I gotta cut the perches off and the shock mounts off on both sides. After 20 years, I blew out the little um, plug here. So I gotta get a new plug. Unfortunately, it is 9 p.m. and Nothing is open for me to get a plug in the Black Hills. Oh, no, I was wrong. 8.35 p.m., still 67 degrees, and this is what I like about South Dakota. It is the beginning of June. Yeah. It's still light out, so... It's dark early in the wintertime, but it stays light longer in the summertime. I can't do anything till the morning. I don't really want to keep cranking on this any later. I just got to pop these perches off, clean them up, but I'm not going to do anything tonight because I got to get that part and it's a lot easier to just air chisel it off because I've been sitting here beating on it with a hammer for the last 20 minutes, getting nowhere. So I'll see you in the morning. So I found the plug for my air hammer, got it. Knocked the perches off, and now I gotta grind off all the rest of the slag, basically. And that is where I'm gonna use my 7 inch Harbor Freight grinder. I'm not a fan of their small ones yet. I still haven't had them hold up, and they pretty much wear out, so I kind of stick with the Walt for my four, four and a half inch grinders. But my 7 inch one, I've only burned up one of these ever, and I've used the snot out of these things. I mean, you can see how dirty that is, and it still keeps working. So if you want a cheap big grinder, I wouldn't steer clear one of these. When you're grinding off, side by sides, okay. So one of the other tricks I wanna show you is when you're grinding, when you're actually grinding off round tubing, don't go side to side like this, but follow the contour of the tubing like that keeping your grinder flat, your grinder disc flat. It'll make for a lot nicer cleanup and it'll be nice and smooth around the tubing. So then when you go and sand it, you can actually still sand it that direction and it'll still keep the roundness of the tube and you won't have all those cuts from digging down into it. So you can see here, I don't have a whole bunch of nicks going in there. So when I do the sanding disc i can go the same way and it'll stay nice and clean and i won't have a bunch of divots in the axle from where i was grinding We have the 14 bolt just sitting here. I don't know how lined up it is left to right, but we are going to use Barnes U-Bolt Eliminators. Basically, this goes through a bolt, and then you don't have to have a U-Bolt anymore. 
I did this for a couple of reasons. One reason I went with the Barnes U-Bolt Eliminators is because it doesn't have to go, I don't have anything hanging down below the axle at that point. My U-Bolts and everything, I don't have them, so I have nothing hanging down there to catch rocks. Secondly, the reason I went with this is because the plate here that the leaf spring mounts to is huge. This thing is massive both ways, and what that's gonna do is help prevent axle twist of any kind Hopefully because that's a huge problem with leaf springs in the back is your axle actually twisting leaf spring flex Basically where they try to s and then it rocks your pinion and then you break a pinion yoke. So hopefully Something that thick and wide will help prevent that compared to the original leaf spring perch. that's only five inches by two and a half inches this new one is almost nine inches across and five and a half inches wide. So this one's as wide as this one is long. Don't forget that Barnes is part of the Onyx Elite membership. So if you're an Onyx Elite member, you're gonna get a discount on these parts as well. well I'm gonna put my phone on silent. This is what your phone does all the time when you're answering messages. <laughs> This point in the juncture, it'd be the easiest for me to have a vehicle lift where I could lift this up, set it under, but I don't have that. So in the past, I've used an engine hoist and picked it up here and just picked up the back of the truck. But I don't know if I want to try to drag my engine hoist in here. Never tried this before, but we'll find out if it works. I'll just come under the overload spring. Maybe I can do one side at a time. Get that a little closer. Oh yeah, that wasn't too bad. There we go. Nice tight fit. That was pretty easy, actually. Ooh, don't go that way. Go out the front. Okay, we learned that lesson. The total length of my dual cases is 23 inches and the center is basically six inches down from the body down to the center of the output shaft. So I just measured back that 23 inches and put a piece of tape up. I don't know if you can even see it back up in there, but it's hanging right there. And that's how I measured off of that to get my pinion angle straight up to it because I want to run a CV rear drive shaft so I can come straight down to it. So I got the jack underneath the suspension just to get it under load. Uh, I still got my floor jacks under there just in case something twists or fails. I got my floor jacks to hit the frame to save from me getting crushed. But basically the easiest way I've found to do this is just to measure the backing plate of the, of the axle and then over to your leaf spring. So you set, the, set it down at the weight so you can set your pinion angle and then you actually just measure between each side. I'll show you real quick. So right here, we are five and three eighths, five and three eighths from the edge of this backing plate to the edge of the perch. Now we can check this side and this is five and an eighth. So I only got to move my perches over basically an eighth of an inch on each side. So instead of trying to shift the axle, if you're way off, I can just tap this an eighth inch, tap that an eighth inch, measure it. I'll tack it and then we can pull it out. Five and a quarter, and it's that simple. That's the easiest way I've ever found to center up your leaf spring perches and to get them true with each other and true at the angle you need and everything else is just to set it down on the suspension, get your pinion angle where it is, adjust it, then you can correct your pinion angle if you gotta move it a little bit, 
but now we have a perfectly trued up leaf spring purchase and I didn't have to sit there and try to measure across the diff or get weird or anything like that. So pretty easy way to do it. That's how I do it. If you guys got an easier way of doing it, let me know in the comments below. Am I gonna be able to get this thing out of my garage? So I put three tacks on each side, that way it hopefully won't break off or anything when I pick this thing up to get the axle back out and then we can burn it in. So before I pull the axle out, the next thing I wanna do is make my shock mounts. That way I have it all ready. So I'm just gonna use one of these junk shocks I got here and just kinda get a design of where I want it to be. I don't think I can be up in here because now I'm into that plate. So I think I'll have to mount it out here somewhere. Looks like right on the edges of here is where I want my shock mount. Now I could theoretically just weld that to there, but that really wouldn't hold up very well. So what I'm gonna do here is just get this measurement, which is 29 and a half. So I know that the outside of shock mount to outside of shock mount is 29 and a half. Easy enough, right? So we'll set this here, set that there. We'll tack them in and I'll, I'll have to cut this tube down obviously to get the right length, but we'll get it figured out. So I cut the tube to sit, fit inside the frame rails. I know that the outside edge here is where I want the outside edge of my shocks. So it's really important to, to get your shocks as outboard as possible. That's why you notice in like the JKs and the JLs, they move the shocks out from where the TJs were and things like that. When this truck was built, everybody thought you wanted to bring your shocks in and put them like that because you could get more flex out of them. But the problem with that is then you get a lot more sway out of the truck, just like this, you get a lot more sway. So, so you want your shocks as outboard as possible and that's going to keep your rig as stable as possible. This original shock mount's already here perfectly for me, but now I just got to cut this chunk out so I can roll the shock tabs down. I'll probably flip it over, but that's no big deal. They're gonna be shocking. The awesome. Woo. So we got everything welded up. There's one last thing I want to do before we paint this thing and put it under there for a final install under the truck. This is one thing that I cannot stand about a 14 bolt. And on the back side, look at how deep my finger sits here. That's a full inch, easy, that it comes in. There's a big lip that's just gonna catch all the rocks. And that's one thing that my teammates aren't really thinking about is rock crawling. And that is a huge thing with the 14 bolts, with the Stirlings, with all the big axles, is you wanna shave that base off and get them nice and smooth so you can slide over them rocks. So I just took out probably three quarters of an inch of just lip. So I just gained three quarters of an inch of clearance at my lowest point of my axle. And you can see there's still a little lip here. So I'm gonna take my grinder and grind this thing smooth. And then I'm gonna roll this edge here so that if it hits a rock, a rock will come over here and just slide over and won't catch this big fat lip that used to be there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at the scars on the bottom of that original lip. That's how much chunk that we're taking off. We probably just gained a solid inch, if not just a little more by doing that. And now everything's smooth, so if we hit a rock, it'll just slide over. It's off the jack stand. Anybody out there make stickers? I need a rad stamp sticker. I need a stamp that says rad, so I can rad stamp this thing, because I'm stoked. You guys voted, you guys said keep the wheelbase at 126. So the wheelbase is 126. Uh, I'm really stoked on how this thing's coming together. I wanna get it out. I wanna try to get the brakes done so I can at least roll it outside 
and let you guys see it outside. I think I'm calling this video because tomorrow I gotta go pick up Matt, uh, which also means I gotta go pick up some Dr. Pepper. But anyway, if you guys like this video, check these out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.